Hey everybody, it's Nick Inman, founder of VolumeProfileTrader.com on Monday, January 28th, and uh, I just want to give you a little broader view, update of the market, and then members, we're going to go into our some of our positions that we have on and we've had on uh, the past week or so, kind of go through them, you know, give you my view and, and how I view this, uh, you know, not only the ES, but the, the uh, names we're in. Uh, just give you my viewpoint where I think they should go and uh, how we're defending ourselves on any type of pullback. So uh, one thing I want to mention is on a two-year chart here, actually a lot of two-year charts look pretty interesting. A lot of names look like they're at decent levels where we could see some type of turn uh, either way or maybe a continuation to the upside. So one, I don't really consider this resistance because it really is just connecting the last two points. But with that said, this channel has given us a, a range that we could trade. The bottom of the range is right time to be a buyer and vice versa for the top end of the range. So I just want you to be careful with this. Um, you know, our, our original thesis was the first weekend of the new of the new year. I was saying, look, buy the dip. Um, you know, fund managers were saying at the time of CNBC, uh, you know, wait for the pull or uh, uh, yeah, they were saying like wait for the pullback. Uh, to get in, you know, we're kind of expecting a sell-off, whatever. And I think really that what that was was them getting, trying to get involved in the market at any price that was given to them. And the reason why was because they were lightly invested going into uh, or into Q1 2013 because of the whole fiscal cliff thing. Um, and that's really it. There's not much more to it. it this is the simple idea that. Uh, you know, manage fund managers trying to chase performance. I mean, this you're staring at it right here. Um, so let's just kind of let's see. Uh, so the yes, you know, I, I can see. Okay, there at some point, maybe we top out in the next two weeks or so. But it probably won't be a one day, you know, event. It'll be a process drawn out over the course of you know two weeks, a month, or whatever. If there is some type of top here and. We're going to be looking at volume profile to determine, but notice, you know, these tops here were, you know, it wasn't a one-day event. There were multiple days to sell at or near the highs, and, you know, I think that's where we could be approaching. You know, the high could be 1,500, and that's it, and from there, we're going to retrace maybe all the way back to 1,450, but the point is, you know, if you've been trying to catch the high uh, since the new year, how's that worked out? It's been really tough. So you have 1,500 psychological level, but we all we are also at right at this resistance here. Uh, so keep that in mind. So let's go into something different. The Nasdaq. Now, one thing that's different about the Nasdaq versus the S and P is uh, the S and P back last summer, or I guess last fall, uh, November area, uh, came back, tested the the top of this high volume area here. You can see big uh, patch of volume. We came, tested it uh, successfully, and we've had a nice ride off of that. Um, notice the point of controls in that level. But when you look at the NASDAQ, what you're seeing is, give me one second. All right, what you're seeing is the point of control hasn't migrated higher, or you know, really price hasn't touched this big value uh, cluster, this big high volume area, in over... Uh, what we're going on on a year, you know, call it that. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Usually, I'd like to see some type of test of major value. Uh, the fact that we haven't gotten it in the Nasdaq means one of two things: one, the Nasdaq is really strong, or two, um, you know, there's not enough buying pressure up here. There's not enough value migration, and we could at some point see a retracement. I think. Uh, this market is really set to continue this upward movement. I really don't think we've seen the highs yet. Um, and, you know, we, we just have to be patient on our longer term entries. But this is, uh, you know, the NASDAQ, for example, could easily go up another, uh, you know, 6 7% before I would look to really sell it. And uh, that's basically going off of this momentum here. We're consolidating sideways here. Uh, you know that's that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as there's a resolution and the resolution is to the upside for longs. Uh, if it's not, then you could see some type of pullback. However, as long as we remain in this structure right here, if I can draw it, 
where you know in this channel we have one low major low we have a higher low and then we have higher highs here as long as we maintain above this low I think we're okay which basically means we can't breach this trend line um, so it's okay if we come back down because that doesn't mean that this mo up move is over it just could mean that the velocity of it uh, it's you know it's not ready to take off like the ES for example has um, the Russell this is a great bounce this is a great example of being patient making sense of what's going on using common sense and I know you know that's it really only makes sense in hindsight but you know thinking about this okay fund managers they really can't put on the risk in Q4 given the fiscal uncertainties you know who knows what the market would have done but now that they have some certainty uh, they have a new year they can catch on to this momentum and really push things higher the fact that the majority of the volume was right here at a uh, 8022 on the Russell you know leads you to believe that there could be a lot more upside if you really look at this I can make an argument for an inverse head and shoulders and if that's the case it's called 600 the low uh, 840 the high you have another 140 points off of this you know 840 level or so you know I can do the math there's still upside here it may not be the right time to buy right here right now but I bet you if you watch this trend line here uh, there's a good likelihood that it may not be breached as long as this continues to do what it does. Now, if it does pull back, then I still think you look for uh, you know the buyers to come in, you join them. I, I just think that's what's going on right now uh, in the Russell. So you know, overweight small caps makes sense to me. All right, we should look at the VIX. Now the VIX is. Um, you know, I was actually looking at buying protection in this range right here. Dip below, you know, that's really when I should have bought it uh, on this dip here because I, I, I doubt that it doesn't revert. So you could be profitable on some VIX calls or, um, you know, playing the S&P uh, options the right way, uh, which I'm, you know, not a complete expert in in terms of, uh, you know, playing volatility like that and so on. Uh, but nevertheless... You know, you, you just watch on it, 1229, bottom of the range. I would actually be surprised if we breached that, um, you know, short term. Uh, you know, I, I could be completely wrong, but I, I'm i pretty sure we're closer to the bottom end of the VIX range. Uh, maybe we have a little more to go, but i just kind of point that out there. All right, let's get into, uh, you know, names that matter. And if I can type it. Apple is the first and what I think we're seeing here on Apple is uh, a big reversion a big round trip where you had you know this breakout from earnings and it just kept running well here we are to retest it well guess what we only have one closing day below that level today was um, you know a few things that I want to point it out and maybe uh, I, there you go uh, alright what I'm trying to say is uh, we have a higher low here and it only matters if it remains a higher low and what we really need to see is a higher high. We need to break above this 456 level. And from there, I'm pretty confident you're going to see 465 or so on Apple. Um, so basically, we can just get into our position right here. If I can pull it up. There we go. Um, we need to see Apple get above this 453 level. This, this is an important level. It's a retracement. Um, you know, that's that's fine. Uh the point of control is about to be here probably in another day or so, probably a day. I wouldn't be surprised, at least, given the volume that we've seen. Um, but what you're looking for is, okay, we have kind of like a double bottom here. Uh, you, you just want to see how much momentum the buyers have. If they can push this above 453 and close above it, I, I think there's a strong likelihood that you're going to go see 462, 464 uh, pretty darn quick. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it, it snaps up from those levels too. Let's wait till we get there. But I think you at least have to find risk from the from the downside, only because we we've, we've retested these levels on two different days, and uh, both times have been rejected. So uh, keep that in mind. You probably have a a mental stop around 440 with uh, depending on price action. DuPont, I think you just continue to let this run. Let it do what it has to do. If you want to use trailing stop, uh, 47.54 would be it, which means locking in pretty 
decent profits. Um, but I'm, I'm inclined to uh, kind of let this work. Keep a stop at break even, definitely. But I really don't see a reason for it not to go up to 49.50 uh, or so. The only thing I do see, okay, I see the 200-day. But really, has that been relevant? You know, you could, all right, I could see a few times. Here it's been relevant. Here, eh, kind of. Um, here it was just like a big pivot point. Um, but really not too useful. So 49.50, uh, the point of control for the last two years is 49.90. I wouldn't be surprised if that gets hit also. That would be a level I'd be looking to take profits in. Unless if you're expecting DuPont to move back up towards 53 or so, if that's the case, and uh, you think this is just, you know, consolidation pattern waiting to break out to the upside, you know, you don't sell it. And you realize that it's a longer term view. And, uh, you know, it's really as long as it doesn't breach your uh, time frame, or excuse me, your break even price, I, I think you can hold it. If it breaks your break even price, it's not worth the risk of holding. So uh, you can always get back in in that, in that circumstance. All right, Microsoft, uh, this is going to. Uh, 28 half. So you probably have another 50 cents of upside here. This has actually been a pretty good trade. Uh, this two-year point of control, I'm inclined to think that it could be a really good level to be long off of in in the relative stance that it's Microsoft. Um, so really just the bottom end of this range, 28.50 is my first target. My next one would be value area high, 29.30. That's basically the 200-day uh, moving average also. So just keep that in mind. Um, but this this looks like it's going to be uh, you know bought up. Earnings are already passed, so we don't have to worry about that. And uh, you know we're seeing a nice move off of this base, and that's what we want to see. So Microsoft doing its thing. Uh, Apple already covered. All right, Wells Fargo. Let's see. <clears throat> Come on. All right. Um, Wells Fargo. Uh, this is a name that looks like it wants to move higher. Uh, given, you know, the other banks, if you look at, for example, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs has taken off from its point of control for the last two years. Uh, JP Morgan. Similar, uh, take, has taken off from its point of control for the last few years. So here I am at Wells Fargo, and I'm getting the same thing here. Um, you know, point of control for the last two years, 34 bucks. That means price has migrated higher. Uh, excuse me, value has. There's a lot of uh, activity that's taken place here. You can see this by the duration of time it's spent here. Um, but I, I think there is a likelihood that this thing could start to break out, and I'm just kind of waiting for confirmation from price action. So far, we're not getting that, but I zoom in on an hourly chart, and I'm seeing, wow, this looks pretty good. You have the point of control for the last 90 days, this current month, all right here. You know, this kind of looks like the setup of uh, DuPont, which was like right here. You had the moving averages right under. Um, it's probably more relative to this setup uh, as far as where the point of control was for 90 days. But, you know, you basically get this sideways consolidation and then a push higher. That's all I'm looking for for Wells Fargo. Um, you know, another example, LinkedIn did a similar thing. You had this sideways consolidation and then it, you know, pushed higher. Uh, so that's, that's another example right there. Uh, Wells Fargo just happens to be in that category. So let's see if it can move. Similar to like Potash. Uh, I guess not similar, really. But uh, this thing, we probably should have stayed long longer. But oh well, we made some money on it. Uh, you know, it, it you had this circumstance where, okay, sideways consolidation here. Missed the entries, with the good entries right here on these long buying tails. But we got in, you know, somewhere in the 41 range at the new year. And we rode this up and we, we got out, you know, some up here. Or somewhere around here and then some down here um, but you know this was one where if we kept our buy at break even I'm not sure what it is or what it was um, we could still be in this and it's made new highs and there's really no reason to sell this 
uh, because it, it continues to look good and uh, especially with the point of control for the last two years here uh, this could be something that makes a meaningful push towards high 40s and uh, you never know maybe up to the 50s uh, so keep that in mind if I kind of just draw a trend line here and just you know broadly drawing this but this has pretty much been the trading structure a lot of activity buying the extremes has been profitable so this could you know potentially break back above this band and then maybe push up towards you know 50 51 depending on the time frame uh, so you know just keep that in mind and that's kind of how you read charts and if you're unsure but you uh, you know you're, you don't watch individual candles you just want to get involved at certain prices then you know buy in scales therefore you know you can really focus on the price you want and define your risk that way um, all right gold what I want to say on this is you know we're, we're waiting for it to make its move like this week and guess what FOMC is this week we need to watch this <clears throat> stay on the sidelines if you still are because I, I think there's going to be an opportunity if it's to the short side I'm willing to bet we we drop down to 15 maybe maybe a hundred points from here um, but if we go the upside then you know I would think 130 points or so of upside potential there's there's juice waiting uh, you know basically built up in this gold futures contract and uh, we really need to see a resolution it should be coming soon especially with this uptrending line which matters uh, the point of, and it matters because I have the 200 day moving average right here and I also have the point of control for the last uh, two years here so it shows me a big cluster of levels a lot of levels people are watching a lot of levels where people have emotion it's going to move and we need to watch price action so right now right here right now our sell and if we really zoom in we can see basically a lower high here pretty good volume that was really your sell signal uh, especially after this test here on gold uh, the next day was a confirmation and you see a little fall through after that that's money maker patterns and right now you could be seeing the opposite what would be looking for a higher low and some type of, of proof that the buyers want to be in control short term momentum is down uh, you can see that in the moving averages which is fine but that doesn't mean that you know it's it's done and uh, that's the big thing I just want to see the fib retracement on this uh, right around the 50 55 uh, retracement zones 61 8 it did touch and that was the low uh, so keep that in mind that may be uh, your extreme point that you want to keep it uh, you know keep in the back of your mind write it down whatever you got to do but um, you know just be aware of what's going on here uh, really that's that's all I have to talk about I guess this was pretty lengthy but I haven't spoken in a while and um, you know we, we just need to stay on the same same page and continue to try to make money oh one, one last one uh, AEP American Electric uh, this one if I can zoom out and get on the right page uh, this one looks like it's moving higher. I don't think there's any reason to not own this uh, name right here right now. We're clearly uh, seeing a breakout here. We actually have decent profits given it's slow moving. Uh, but let's just let this one run. Uh, let's manage our risk. Probably get our stop to break even, especially if it continues to move higher. And, uh, you know, this one, high 40s. And if it's a slow mover, that's fine because in the meantime, we'll get paid about one percent for every quarter we hold it so hopefully we can uh, create some alpha uh, you know maybe do a covered call strategy going out uh, you know to the next dividend date I don't know something along those lines may make sense so anyways take care have a wonderful evening and let's see sorry one more second oh dollar that was the last one I want to show uh, we have a 200 day which is resistance right now Again, this is waiting on the Fed meeting. Uh, this is going to be a mover, though. And one thing, you have a huge potential head and shoulders pattern here on the dollar. Let's see if I can get the right tool. Sorry. This this matters, too, I think. This is, to me, this is interesting. And, and I don't really get too interested about head and shoulders patterns. But basically, you have 84.25. 
uh, down to around 78.75 as a potential move to the downside. Well, guess what? That pretty much puts you uh, in the 74 range before you really have to think about this. And then, you know, you never know. Uh, you Pressing 73 or so could be possible. Um, and then the upside, you would look back up towards around 83. Uh, well, I guess take out these highs first. But uh, I would be betting this next move that you see the next big buy bars, sell bars, whatever you see on the dollar is going to be the trend uh, for the next month or so. So anyways, take care. Have a great night, and I'll talk to you next time.